So today I'll be talking more about our newest managed airflow service, Double Cloud, and also touching base on like types of executors and also like environments and what different type of executors we have and what's the plans that we have for uh, future releases and what we wanted to incorporate and collect some feedbacks. So uh, to start off with, myself and Deepan, I'm working as a senior product manager here at Double Cloud. So my responsibilities are within like uh, product strategy, roadmap, and also making sure like collecting the feedbacks, that's more important, and also making sure to listen to customers to incorporate it in the product. Uh, before we go, let me just give a quick introduction about Double Cloud itself. So Double Cloud is more like an, um, a platform for managing your data infrastructure, the entire infrastructure. So be it like you want your data infrastructure, uh, it starts usually from the data ingestion. So right from the data ingestion until the visualization layer, so you have all these different components. So you need some kind of a streaming capabilities part of it. And also you need to store this data somewhere. So that's where we have a ClickHouse service where you can just use it for a faster OLAP uh, performance. And the beauty of Double Cloud is like all these blocks are actually uh, fully managed and it's cloud agnostic. So you can actually deploy it in uh, AWS or uh, GCP. It can also be either on our cloud or it can also be like uh, and you bring your own cloud uh, situations as well. And we made sure to pick all this different uh, uh, technologies uh, based on open source community feedback. And we know that it's quite popular and it's performant. It's not just because it's open source, we wanted to add it because there's n number of uh, tools available there. And uh, the main use cases that we see among double cloud or among like real time streaming, observability, like people want to collect all the logs, process it for the faster analytical performance, and also like build data pipelines uh, out of it. So you can see like all these components are kind of like a Lego uh, brick. So you can just pick and choose what you want. On the left hand side, you can see like uh, the data sources where you want to see, collect all this data from different uh, data points. So we use uh, Airbyte uh, connectors for the same. And then once it's uh, collected, you want to store it somewhere. So that's why we have a managed click of service to uh, process all this uh, data that needs to be stored. So the, initially we started off with uh, ClickHouse and managed uh, Kafka service and transfer. But we keep hearing from our customers like uh, they really needed a bit more, uh, they wanted to have this orchestration of all these components. Um, that's why we started looking up uh, into the open source community like, and then we uh, wanted to uh, incorporate Airflow, that's quite popular, and that's, that's why we introduced uh, Managed Airflow, and it's GA since yesterday. So uh, we have been running it in private preview for last one year and collecting feedbacks from our customers on how they use it and uh, what's the purpose they want. So we have seen like use cases around like they kind of orchestrate it with our data transfer as a, like a trigger point, like move data from a Airbyte source to a ClickHouse using, um, they orchestrated with Airflow and also like together with the DBT packages, they just uh, kick off all the services in the same orchestration. So that's kind of a common use case that we see. All these blocks that you see, it's like, it's not like you just need to buy all these packages uh, for one single cost. It's like, um, it's pr prices are very transparent. You just need to pick each one of these components and then uh, the pricing is based on the configurations what you need to be, uh, pay for. And um, there are like situations where we are seeing like customers using a combination of both. It's not necessary that you need to uh, invest in all this uh, stack, but it's like you can just go with Kafka plus ClickHouse or like um, uh, like ClickHouse and the managed airflow uh, for a data orchestration. So it's quite flexible in that way. And you can also use our uh, uh, visualization layer, which is quite uh, free by the way, uh, to add and build the real time dashboards on top of it. Now let's talk a little bit more about like the Airflow service that we have. So it's built on open source um, uh, vanilla version. So all these uh, components that you see here, uh, it's actually built on open source uh, base images. So we don't add any abstraction to it or any kind of uh, customization so that we don't lock any customers into this ecosystem of all these different uh, solutions. So it's like, it's built on open source. So they just have like same services just like any other uh, open source that they have been using in-house, and then it's quite possible that they can just migrate it easily. The second point is like a dedicated clusters for Airflow, so we don't have any uh, uh, shared instance as such. It's like any cluster is just spinning up Airflow with us, it's more going to get a dedicated instance, and there's no uh, the, their own network isolated uh, instance, and it's also like uh, cloud agnostic. It's currently we are at AWS, uh, GCP, and uh, Azure are still in uh, plans. And on top of it, customers can still uh, use, bring your own cloud in which they can just deploy part of their data eco, uh, like the data plane within their uh, cloud provider as well. 
We have easy to customize features like uh, custom Docker images, which I'll talk about in a couple of slides, and uh, also more about auto scaling worker nodes. And it, the, the, the previous slide you guys see different blocks. So that's also the benefit. It's like when you go with double cloud, all these blocks are tightly integrated. That applies to Airflow as well. So we made sure like Airflow kind of integrates uh, with the existing services of double cloud, like be it ClickHouse, be it a transfer, or be it uh, Apache Kafka. So it's tightly integrated, so it, ma it makes it more easy. Like you have this complete data ecosystem, and then it's easy to orchestrate within it or also uh, any other third-party services that you want to use. And uh, bring your own cloud is also something that I'll talk about in future slides, and uh, support plan is something that we have on part of this uh, managed Airflow service. So we did like a lot of uh, custom interviews. Like many uh, companies, they just start with a simple Python script, or they just use like uh, Jupyter notebooks, try out some queries, and eventually they wanted to move ahead with like okay, they wanted to uh, schedule this uh, specific queries tasks over the period of time, and that's when it starts uh, becoming more complex, and they wanted to bring in their own custom libraries as part of this orchestration. And uh, we listened to all this kind of uh, feedback, and we also did our own uh, CusDev interviews. Like uh, we see, like 40% of our potential customers really wanted to execute some custom codes, not just go with the standard libraries what's available. So that's when uh, we have actually introduced a custom container images. So custom container images is a feature that uh, we have within uh, Double Cloud Airflow where. We have the Airflow. What we built on is based on like the base open source uh, Docker Hub images, and the customers can uh, like each Airflow cluster that we spin up comes along with a container registry where its uh, customers can just pull the, uh, ba the base image, make some customizations, add extra libraries which they want to uh, into the um, the image itself, and then push it back to uh, the registry. So Double Cloud it spins up. Uh, uh, the cluster again, making sure like all the dependencies are in a line and making sure like there's no such errors involved in it. And then it gets uh, deployed uh, with the, all the customizations that they want. So here's an example of a GitHub repository, uh, which uh, demo can just go and look into the URL. Uh, it basically explains like a configuration of a, a double cloud managed Airflow with right from uh, the data ingestion. Uh, with the Trouble Cloud Transfer Service using Airflow and also DBT. Uh, it incorporates uh, the changes in the custom Docker images, so it, it makes it more easy. So uh, our Double Cloud Apache uh, Airflow is it's based on a managed Kubernetes instance, and uh, we use a Celery uh, Kubernetes Executor, uh, given its performance for low latency in performing uh, when there are like resource resource uh, like uh, resource hungry task, which is more uh, useful for us. So that under the hood, we can kind of orchestrate and kind of manage it uh, ourselves. So speaking of executors, so executors is nothing but just a mechanism uh, to uh, responsible for how these tasks are executed. So uh, overall, if you see the Airflow, there are like three main of three main. I think most of you guys must be aware of executors. Just to reiterate on that. So it's mainly like local, queued, uh, and then uh, containerized executor. So each of them has it has its own uh, pros and cons. And it depends on your specific scenarios where you wanted to uh, start off with something, and then uh, you can eventually uh, scale your uh, executors in that way. So to start off with, local executors is mostly like a really a great place to start off with for testing purpose or learning. It's really, really fast to work with. And also, uh, it, in, in downside, it also uses the same resource as uh, the schedulers, and it becomes more like a bottleneck when there are like too many tasks that needs to be processed. And also, it's executed, as I said, on the same host as a scheduler, so it, it's kind of a bit downside, and also it adds up in terms of uh, performance in terms of low latency. So usually, uh, the, the, most of the users they start off with local executors, uh, and they want it just for testing or something, and then they eventually uh, just choose any other executors or deploy it on their own. The next one is uh, the queued or batch executor. So this, uh, the, the example would be like Celery Executor is an example here. So here the workers are waiting on the queue, and then the executor just uh, sends this task to the queue. So what happens is like with uh, uh, the queued or the batch executors in, in terms of salary executor here, there's isolation happening between like the worker and uh, the scheduler. So uh, it's a bit of uh, like isolation, which is really, really good. And also 
um, the, the, the thing is like workers also working on different uh, specific tasks. So it becomes more like a bottleneck when uh, you have a lot of tasks competing for that specific resource because of this uh, isolation that happens. The third one is like a container ex executor. So what happens here is like all the tasks are kind of executed within the pods. So each task is isolated within its own binaries with libraries. So there is no like uh, noisy neighbor problems. And also it's good uh, uh, choice if you have like a complex computation that you wanted to do really in DAX, like a really, really complex workflow with multiple tasks and multiple nodes. And uh, it takes time to uh, start off uh, when uh, you're kicking off this uh, executor. So it basically takes some time in terms of uh, the compute. But once the process is done, it, it just kills off the pod and it's good to go. So with Airflow 2.10 release, so it's really, really a, cute, a cool uh, feature that we have. It's like a hybrid execution. So all the executors that we saw in the previous slide, it makes it more now easy for customers to just uh, pick and choose what they want. It's mostly like a, a possibility to use all different executors. It's not, you don't really have to rely on one single executor, but basically like define different executors within the script and then you can good to go. So it's basically like you can actually um, uh, specify uh, the executors on the task level as well as on the DAG level. So it makes it more uh, interesting for uh, customers. Depending on the use case, they can just say like, okay, for maybe this task is more resource, in resource intensive. So maybe I will use a specific executor or maybe this DAG is it's okay. I can just uh, maybe a lightweight one. So in that case, you can just specify on a DAG level and task level on this executors and it's, uh, uh, it executes accordingly. And uh, it's also possible to write your own executors uh, and then uh, use it along with this list of executors. So you can see here, you can just specify um, the two executors here, and then the first one is by taken as a default one. So with the previous AIP 69, 69 is more like extended version of uh, the AIP 61, and uh, it's called the like, Edge Executor. It's going to be really, really cool. It's not yet there, but uh, we see like, uh, Customers are really asking this kind of uh, capabilities where they wanted to have this remote workers or uh, like edge worker nodes, which is specifically running on a specific uh, cloud environment. So it makes it more uh, easy for them to have this worker node close to their uh, uh, data wherever they are processing and uh, within their specific ecosystem. So that makes it more uh, easy for uh, customers to uh, handle it. We don't have that, uh, I mean, it's not yet in Airflow, and uh, we're still looking and following that uh, specific uh, feature, and we, we wanted to see how we can incorporate it within the double cloud. And uh, as part of Bring Your Own Cloud, actually, it's more like control plane and data plane, as you can see. So within the uh, data plane, the, um, the scheduler, web server, and worker nodes, all these kind of components are actually deployed on the customer's uh, VPC within the cloud environment. The reason why we see is like customers really wanted to have this kind of a uh, uh, issues with security, data residency, or for the privacy reason, they wanted to have this complete ecosystem of a data processing unit within their cloud provider. And Double Cloud actually facilitates that. And what Double Cloud hosts is mainly on the control plane. Let's move mainly on like layers on top of it, like be it uh, monitoring, uh, notification service, or any other uh, like uh, keeping uh, the the cluster up and uh, running with in terms of updates and maintenance. So those are activities. It's uh, taken care of the control plane. Just the metadata is passed over there. So yeah, but, uh, just we're almost at the end of slide. So we have some plans for future. We wanted to have a shared infrastructure. That's something that we're working on to bring down the cost. So currently, it's a dedicated instance, but we also wanted to see how we can uh, make it more cost effective for customers, having a shared infra of um, the environment itself, so that have, having their worker <laughs> nodes specifically deployed on their own uh, clouds is going to bring the cost specifically down. And uh, also like introducing a high availability configuration and also working on like multi-region like worker nodes. So these are something that uh, we are still exploring and we are trying to add it to the service itself. Uh, you can use the about two links to uh, go and uh, read about more about double cloud service. Uh, it's not just about Airflow, but uh, yeah, you, you can also look in a pricing page to see uh, the pricing, what you see. The, the pricing, what you see, would be more like a transparent pricing for the monthly usage uh, estimate, and there's no additional uh, cost or traffic costs involved to it. It's just going to be like flat, transparent pricing. So, yeah, pretty much that's it.